Well, good afternoon, everybody. Let's uh, let's get serious on this boat project thing. Today we're going to start building the jack plate for the for my motor for my 25 horse Johnson motor. Now let me show you what's got to happen here. That is around here they call them short shanks because a short shank motor. It is a uh, it measures from the on the motor 18 inches. On the old boat. I adjusted it several times and finally got it right to where the levels and all were right. The cavitation plate and all was perfect. That was 16 inches. Now what I've got is 20 inches. A little bit more than 20. So that means let's see, mark this and I'll get my hand out of the way. The top of the motor throat has got to go right there. Now, what I'm going to do, this piece here, on a larger motor like the 50 that used to be on there, if you've seen the other videos, it will fit this perfectly. But what I've got to do is build a bracket to go here, to where it only sticks up to here, and it's going to come off the boat about two inches and allow it to sit down in there. Because... I thought about just cutting it down here. All right, well that's not going to work because this is bolted to the stern of the boat. To do that, I wouldn't have enough room here for the cleats to go down in. So what I'm going to do is take this off. This has got a uh, six bolts. I'm going to take this off, put the bolts back in there. So no water will get in there, and so I won't lose them. <laughs> you don't know how that is. You take something off, you don't put it right back, it gets lost. And I'll hang this up in the shop and keep it for some other time. Because the 25 is not going to be the permanent motor for the boat, I don't think. Uh, for right now, if I'm going to get this boat in the water by the end of the year, uh, I'm... I've got to do something, and I'm doing it. I've got another project after this one, but we'll talk about that later, and I will need some help on that one. Now, I've got my little plans drawn out. I'm going to build it in the shop, build the, uh, the, uh, the jack plate in the shop, and I'm going to put it on there. Should not be a lot of trouble. I don't want to <laughs> don't want to say that because it'll turn into trouble, but uh, I think I can do it. I've watched several videos on guys doing it uh, My buddy mean Gene sent me a picture of one that he built Basically the same principle of what I'm gonna do So let's get started. I'm gonna take this off And then I'll get in the shop and we'll start cutting metal We have the technology all right, there we go this old plate is off. Now this is a factory setup deal here. So uh, like I said, I'm gonna hang this in the shop and make sure nothing happens to it. Cause I will need it again one day. Now I'm gonna clean this off real good right quick and put a, a coat of paint on it. Probably use a rattle can just for now. And then I will put these uh, nuts and bolts back in. Put a little dab of silicone on them so they don't leak through. What I don't want is water to come, when you slow down, you know, your water comes back up on you. I don't want any holes back here for it to dump water in. Because water is supposed to be on the outside of the boat, not on the inside of the boat. Ask me how I learned that many years ago. <laughs> All right, let's get moving. We'll uh, be in the shop. All right, the transom is taken care of. I put the bolts back in, siliconed them up, put a little bit of paint on there. That's a real boring type thing, and we'll look at it again when we get ready to put the, the plate on there. 
here is my little plans that I've made All right, we already know I got to go 16 inches that's the height that I want my motor throat to be now each, each plate each side the plate itself is going to be 8 inches and 9 inches across so I need four pieces of this angle iron eight inches long now it may have been better to get aluminum 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 a four foot piece of aluminum at the hardware was uh, I think twenty six dollars which to me was outrageous this was twelve ninety nine now I know aluminum or stainless would be much much better to use but I could not afford aluminum for stainless angle if you can even find it I would have to mortgage the house <laughs> so I went with this because like I keep saying this is not going to be a permanent thing I don't think I hope not anyway one day I'll get my big 50 fixed and get it all set up but for right now for the rest of this year and next year and maybe if it works out right as long as the motor will run um, this is going to have to work so after I cut it what I'm going to do when I get it all together I'm going to sand it real real good and I think I'm going to apply a coat of gun blue on the whole thing on this part of it and then paint it and paint it and paint it and where the steel meets the transom of the boat I have some thin pieces of uh, stainless steel I think I'll put like a buffer bushing if you will in there that way when it does start to rust and it will it doesn't matter what you do to it it's going to start to rust especially here with um, salt water and brackish water that we have it won't, uh, it won't eat into the transom but I do have a bucket of stainless steel nuts and bolts that I have salvaged so the uh, only only cost for the jack plate so far is the price of this piece of metal right here now I had some I've got some angle out there but it's very 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 thick stuff very thick very 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 heavy I think this will do just fine and for the back plate that we'll see later on I have some quarter inch stainless steel um, I've got two pretty good sized sheets of it that I can cut for that so the next step we're going to mark out need to be 8 inches and I need 4 pieces of 8 inch I'm going to mark it there 8 16 24 32 and I did that without a calculator <laughs> there was a time we were taught this kind of stuff in school now this does not have to be perfect I don't have to put a micrometer on it and make sure it's perfect length because when I get all done I'll take the side grinder and grind it off, make it look nice, and all that. Now, to cut this, I think I'm going to take it over here on the porter band and cut it like that. If that don't work, I'll get the side grinder out and cut it that way. But I think on the porter band, I can get a little bit straighter. And I can be inside, not outside. Now for new viewers, uh, new subscribers, well especially new viewers, I know a little bit about metalwork. I am a custom knife maker. That's what I do. I make knives and a few tools. So if you would, I'm going to put in a shameless plug 
It should be scrolling right in here somewhere. Go to my website. Well, the YouTube channel, there's links there to go to the website and all that. And uh, But we're not talking about knives right now. We're talking about jack plates. Just thought I'd throw that in there. Know what I mean? <laughs> Alright, let's cut this steel and we'll look at it again. got 12 holes to drill to bolt these together so we're going to do it on the drill press and I got a fresh bit let's see how it goes Dirty job, but we'll get it done. Now I've got the holes drilled and the plate that's going to go against the transom. Now I cannot maneuver the drill press table to get the holes lined up like I want them. So we're going to go to the old fashioned way the uh, regular old drill motor. We'll drill these. Then I'll go to the other one and drill that. And we'll clean them off and bolt them together. And we'll see that in just a minute. Uh, let's go ahead and drill one right quick. getting some movement here which we don't need straighten them back up tell you what let's just mark them like that then take them to the drill press I think that'll work better yeah let's do that let's hit it again just a minute alright y'all here we go this is it so far now this is going to be part one I don't want to go too awful long on videos. So, um, I just put this anvil here to keep it sitting up straight. It's gonna, actually going to be a little bit narrower than that. The next step will be, well, I'm going to get out my impact wrench and tighten these bolts very, very well. Then I will turn it over because this is this is what's going against the boat this piece here that's going against the uh, the transom now we'll cut the pieces of stainless to go in between there uh, after I sand everything I'm gonna sand it paint it then cut those pieces on this back side will be a piece of that 
heavy stainless I was telling y'all about that will be the hardest part of the whole build because uh, the only way I can cut that stainless is with a side grinder no, but I can do it I've done it before I've cut pieces of it before so it's not that bad it's just it'll be a little time consuming and I have to do all that outside which means in the heat that we're having in the Southland it will have to be done early, early in the morning, right at daylight, which is, I'm out here at daylight anyway, so. <laughs> then, of course, I'll go back and tour everything up, sand, polish, get ready to paint, and then we will mount it on the boat and see what it looks like. Now, thank you all so much for watching. I hope this build helps you out. Uh, just goes to prove, just use what you have. Spend as little as you can. And use your noggin for more than a hat rack. Uh, watch the University of YouTube and you can do things. And I sure hope this works. So. <laughs> Alright, thank you all for watching. Uh, new viewers, please like and subscribe to the channel. I would appreciate it. No telling what you'll see here. Be some knife building. Be some fishing. Be some hunting. Uh, be some family fun time. I love to show off my grandkids. And ain't no telling what else you'll see. So thank y'all for watching, thank you for your support, and I will see y'all tomorrow with part two.